Hello everyone! Para sa video na to, we will be solving for the time using the formula of compound interest. This is our formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N raised to N times T. Kung mapansin natin, yung kailangan nating i-compute na time ay nasa exponent, kaya kailangan natin mag-recall ng certain concept in logarithm para makuha natin siya. But we will be talking about that later on. Tignan muna natin yung components ng ating formula. We have our A here. Ito yung final amount as we compute our compound interest. Then this is just equal to yung P natin. Ito yung principal or initial amount na hiniram or pinahiram natin. We multiply it dito sa nasa loob. We have our 1 plus R. Ito yung rate of interest natin should be in decimals divided by our N. Ito yung number of period in a year. Kapag sinabi natin that we are compounding annually, then ang n natin is just equal to 1, isang beses sa isang taon. Kapag tayo naman ay nagko-compound semi-annually, then ang n natin is equal to 2, that is twice a year. And then kapag nagko-compound tayo quarterly, n is equal to 4. And then kapag monthly, ang n natin is just equal to 12. Ito yung formula natin for compound interest. Now let us use this para makuha natin yung time. This is our example. The question is how many years will it take for an investment of 100,000 pesos to become 1 million pesos if it will be compounded quarterly at 8%? Gano kaya katagal yung aabutin natin para yung pera natin ay maging ganito? We will be starting at our given values. Ano ba yung mga meron tayo? As we check our question, yung investment natin is 100,000. Ito yung initial amount natin, so we can say that this is our principal amount. We write it, this is equal to 100,000 pesos. Then, yung goal natin magiging 1 million pesos siya. This is our final amount, kaya we can represent it as our capital letter A. Ito yung goal natin, ito yung dulo, 1 million pesos. From 100,000 to 1 million Tapos, we will be compounding quarterly. Since we have 4 quarters in a year, ang N natin is just equal to 4. And lastly, yung 8% natin, this is our rate. In decimal form, 8% is just equal to 0 0.08. Kasi ang gagawin lang natin from our 8, whole number siya, ito yung decimal point niya, kailangan lang natin mag-usod ng dalawang decimal places to the left para malipat natin siya to decimal. So, this is 0 0.08 as we have written here. Then, ang hinahanap is how many years. Kung ilang taon bago natin marating yung amount na to, so we have to solve for the value of our time which should be in years. Now, let us proceed with our solution. Sulat natin siya kasi kompleto na naman yung ating given values. Alam na rin natin kung ano yung hinahanap natin. Now, let us have our formula for compound interest which is A, final amount is equal to P times 1 plus R over N raised to N times T. Then, ang gagawin na lang natin is we substitute yung given values natin dito papunta sa ating solution. Let's start with our A na 1 million and then yung P natin dito which is 100,000. So, this will become our A again that is just equal to 1 million. And then this is equal to P is 100,000 times, yung nasa loob natin is 1, plus the rate of interest is 0 0.08 over, ang N natin is 4, kasi quarterly, raised to, ang N natin is also 4, tapos yung T, yung time, this is unknown, ito yung isasolve natin. Then kailangan natin isimplify itong part na to para makuha natin yung T. Una nating matatanggal etong 100,000 kasi the operation between this is multiplication. Kaya ang gagawin natin para mawala siya, let us divide both sides of our equation by 100,000. Both dito sa left side tsaka dito sa ating right side. Kasi as we do this, pareho na 100,000 yung nasa numerator at sa denominator, this will become 1. Kaya ang matitira na lang ay eto. And then yung nasa left side natin, 1 million divided by 100,000, that is simply equal to 10. Then this is equal to, yung natira, we have 1 plus 
0.08 divided by 4, this is just equal to 0.02. And then this is raised to 40. Ano pa ba yung kaya nating simplify? Kung kapansin natin, addition lang naman to. So this is 10 is equal to, yung nasa loob, 1 plus 0.02, that is 1.02 raised to 40. Ngayong simplified na yung equation natin, kailangan nating gawa ng paraan yung t natin na nasa exponent na maibaba natin. Dito na tayo gagamit ng isang law or rule of logarithm. Kaya ang gagawin natin, sundan nyo lang yung proseso para maibaba natin to. Let us get the logarithm nung both sides ng ating equation. Kung ano yung gagawin natin sa left side, ganun din dapat sa right side para ma-maintain natin yung equality. Kaya yung left side, we get the logarithm ng ating 10 is just equal to same sa right side, kukunin din natin yung logarithm ng 1.02 raised to 40. So, ano yung advantage nito? Since yung logarithm natin sa ating right side, 1.02 ay naka-raise sa certain exponent, then we can use our logarithm of a power, wherein kapag kumukuha tayo ng logarithm ng certain term m raised to x, this is just equal to yung nasa taas, na x natin, pwede natin siyang ibaba at i-multiply dun sa ating logarithm. Kaya yung ating logarithm of m raised to x is just equal to yung x pwede natin siyang ibaba times the logarithm of our m. Kaya ito talaga yung dahilan kung bakit tayo kumuha nung logarithm natin nung both sides ng ating equation. Para maibaba natin yung 40 dito kasi exponent siya. Kaya by applying logarithm of a power, pwede natin siyang ibaba. So, I have a separate video about the laws or rules of logarithm. Ilalagay ko na lang yung link sa description. You may check that out. So, we have our same left side, logarithm of 10. This is just equal to, ibababa natin yung ating 40 times the logarithm of nung nasa loob na 1.02. Ngayon, mas madali na siyang isolve kasi yung t natin, wala na siya sa exponent. Kaya, ang gagawin na lang natin para mawala yung kasama niya, yung 4, tsaka yung logarithm of 1.02, i-divide na lang natin yung buong equation natin sa kanila. So, this is divided by 4 times logarithm of 1.02, same sa left side, tsaka dito sa ating right side. Para yung t na lang yung matitira dun sa right side ng ating equation. Then, we perform our division. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Logarithm of 1.02 divided by logarithm of 1.02, this is just equal to 1. Kaya ang matitira na lang ay t. Then para mas presentable yung ating solution, ililipat ko na lang siya sa kabila. Pagpapalitin natin yung left side, ilalagay ko na yung t dito. And then yung nasa left side, we have our logarithm of 10. This is all over 4 times the logarithm of 1.02. Now, etong part na to, kaya na natin siya i-compute directly sa ating calculator para makuha natin yung t. As we compute logarithm of 10 over 4 times logarithm of 1.02, this is just equal to 29.07, this is in years. Kaya from our computation, aabutin tayo ng ganito katagal para yung 100,000 natin ay maging 1 million. Medyo matagal siya, pero kung hindi naman gagalawin yung pera, at least tumutubo siya paunti-unti, at kahit papano lumalaki yung pera. So this is how we compute for that time using the formula ng compound interest. Hello everyone! I am Sir Kenneth of STEM Teacher PH. Kung nakatulong sa'yo itong video na to, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell para updated kayo sa ating uploads. Bye!